you can see that they make a high enough i score i can go back to the shop and i've unlocked a new page and here it is here are our new items and if i close the game and open again you can see that i still go to the next page of the shop perfect hi i'm ricky today we're on the 18th episode of the endless standard series and in this episode we'll take a look on how to implement unlockable pages in our shop now of course you can make it so that the player has to do anything to unlock this extra page in the shop but in our case, that's something we'll be getting a certain high score. So first we make the new UI to accommodate different pages in the shop. Then we make the actual logic behind it so we'll be able to change from one page to another. And finally, we make it so that you can change to a certain page only if you have actually unlocked it. This series is based on a video game that I already made and published called Boat Venture. If you want to know how this finished product will look like, do check it out, link in the description. It's free for all Android devices 9 plus on the Play Store. All right, let's start. So first thing I wanna do is group all these items inside one single game object. So I'm gonna go in the canvas, shop panel, and I'm gonna make a new empty game object. I've also called it page one and stretch it to fit the entirety of the screen. Now let's put all these lot panels inside and let's duplicate it. Now let's disable the first page and let's start modifying the second page. To make things clearer, I'm gonna rename all of the items and change all of the images. Next, I'm also gonna go in the shop item and here I'm gonna add four new items to our shop items and those are just as placeholder to not interfere with our current items. Great, now we can close this and assign those values. Then let's make some buttons to actually change from one page to another. And I'm gonna place them right here on the down right corner, so I'm gonna move this switch language button on another position just momentarily. And these two new buttons to turn the page, I'm gonna put them inside a panel, but instead of just making a new one, I'm just gonna duplicate the play button and remove the text. Also do note that I've put the switch language button in the top panel in the hierarchy. Of course, you can put it anywhere you like. This isn't the final position, of course. Now inside this play button that I've duplicated, I'm gonna add the two new buttons. And we are gonna need the text. And I'm gonna rename the panel to turn page panel and the button to left page button. Also, make sure to select the turn page panel and remove the button component. Now for the image of our button, I'm gonna recycle the image that we've used for the unpause button. And then I'm gonna flip the scale to be minus one on the X, so it looks flipped. One note, do not flip the image using the rotation tool, because if you do so, then the button won't work. Instead, invert the scale just like I've done so. Then I'm gonna duplicate it to make the right button. And make sure to rename them correctly. You can see that UI scales well, so no problem there. And now we can get to the next part, but first let me rearrange this mess. Okay, now let's get to coding. Let's grab our shop manager and let's make a new script. And I'm gonna call it pages in shop manager. In here, we want a reference for each of our buttons, an array of game objects to hold the pages that we have in our shop. And finally, a way to tell which page is currently on. And to do that, we're just gonna use an integer and take that value to unlock a certain index of the array. Okay, now let's make a function to actually turn the page and I'm gonna call it turn page. Let's also add a parameter that tells us whether we want to go right or left. And to do that, we're just gonna use an integer and then we're gonna use plus one if we want to go right and minus one if we want to go left. Now, before we actually open the next page, we want to make sure that that page actually exists. So first, let's grab the page that we want to go to. So let's add to our current index, the page index at the end. Then we check if this value is major or equal to zero, 
and also less than the length of our array of pages. This way we check whether we have that page before we actually go to it. Now to actually turn the page, first we take our pages in shop, use the index of index of pages in shop with currently open page, and deactivate that game object. Then we use the game pages in shop by using the new index that we have made and set that game object to true. Finally, we set the index of the page currently open to be equal to page index to go to. Okay, now let's go back to Unity. I'm gonna link the references. Make sure that you put the left to left, right to right, and that you've put the first page in the first spot. We also don't need this value to be serialized, so later on I'm gonna deserialize it, but let's just keep it for now. Next, let's grab our buttons, and let's add the function. And for the left button, I'm gonna put minus one, and plus one for the right button. Finally, let's deactivate page two, and let's turn on page one. Okay, and if I try to go left, nothing happens. If I go right, I get the second page, you know, if I try to go right again, nothing happens. And you can see here our current index is also correct. So pretty good. Okay, and then as you can see, we've made references for the buttons, but we haven't actually used them. So for the next part, we're actually gonna disable the buttons in case they serve no purpose. So while we're on the first page, we don't want the left button to be interactable. That's just distracting. So let's go back to the script. I'm gonna deserialize this value. And let's make a new private void function called update button interactability. In here, we want our left button to be disabled if we are on page zero and enabled if we are not on page zero. So we could use a very simple if else statement and set it to true if the index is major than zero and to false if the index is zero. But instead, we can just use one simple syntax, which is this one. With this simple line of code, we do what the if statement would have done in multiple lines. Of course, the left button is easier to deal with, we just have to check if you're not on the first page. For the right button, we also have to check whether the next page is available. To do this, we grab our array of pages length, add one to it, and then check if it's major than our current index. To do this, we grab our array of pages in shop, check the length, and subtract one. We then check that value to see whether it's greater than our current index. This way we know if we have an extra spot in our array. Finally, let's call this function when we open the shop, so on awake, and also when we have turned a page. Okay, let's test it out. And let's disable the buttons by default. As you can see, only the right button activates, and when I go to the next page, it deactivates, but now I can go back. And well, you can see it works. If I take out a page, you can see that the right button doesn't activate. Well, if I put an extra page, so I'm just gonna duplicate the second page and add it to the shop manager real quick. You can see that we can now go to that third page, as you can see here in the hierarchy, and we didn't need to change anything in the code. Pretty good. Okay, and for the final part, we're gonna make it so that the extra pages in the shop aren't actually always available, but are only available if you have actually unlocked them. How we're actually gonna unlock them, it's gonna be really simple. What we want to focus about is actually locking them. So let's go back to our script, and in here we want to save the amount of pages that are locked, and to do that we're gonna use a player pref, so let's make a new private const string called pref extra pages unlocked. Then when we update our button's interactability, we add an extra check to our turn right button to see if the page that we want to go to has actually been unlocked with our player pref. So let's add an if statement. And let's check if the amount of pages that we have unlocked is major than the page number that we're currently on plus one. Major or equal. And if it's so, we turn the right button to be interactable, otherwise we set it to not interactable. And as you can tell, we can simplify the syntax to put it in one single line of code. So let's go and do that.
I've used an if and else statement at first just to show you a better way of doing it and also to make it a bit more clear. You can also add an AND operator in here and take this line of code here and add it there, but that will just make things a bit too complicated. Great, so now we have locked pages. Now let's make a new public void function to unlock an extra page. In here, we just take the play path of perf extra pages unlocked and add one. While we are here, let's also put a warning in case we unlock more pages than we actually have in our game. To do this, we just take the number of pages unlocked and see if it's major than the amount of pages that we have in our array. Good, now let's go to Unity and let's make a debug button on the fly just to test this function. Okay, and now if I hit play, you can see that I can't go to the next page. If I add a page, I close and hit again. You can see that now I can go to the second page. And if I add another page, because we have three pages in our shop, I can go to the third page. And if I try to unlock another page, you can see that I get the warning. Now, as you've seen, we have to actually move between the buttons to update our unlocked pages. So let's go back to the script real quick. And when we unlock an extra page, let's call also update buttons interactability. Great. This way, if you unlock the next page that we are currently on, then the buttons will update and we can go to that page. Perfect. Now let's add a way to actually unlock an extra page that isn't with a debug button. In my case, I made it so that the player has had to reach a thousand yards. And we do have a script that is called Yards Manager, so let's go grab it. Now there are a lot of ways that we can face this feature. One thing we can use is a delegate or an action to subscribe to this check new high score function. Instead, since we don't have a lot of things going on, I think it's easier if we just add a functionality to this method. In this function, when we make a new high score, we check if our score is higher or equal to 1000, and if it's the first time, then we make a score that is higher or equal to 1000. And if it's so, we call the pages in shop manager, and we want to call the unlock page function. And to do that, let's make a singleton. This way, with this bit of code right here, will only be called when we have reached a thousand or more yards, and only once. Now, of course, we don't want to use a fixed number, so instead let's make a variable. But because we already used this script to manage yards, I don't want to put stuff that actually belongs to another script, that is pages in shop manager. So instead, let's make this new variable in pages in shop manager, and let's make it public so you can get it inside our yards manager. And because we don't actually want to change this value, let's make it at get and private set. I also want to serialize this value though, so let's make a duplicate to serialize it. Great, now let's go back to the yards manager, and in here instead of a thousand, we read the value that we just made. Now to Unity, I'm gonna clear all the player paths, and I'm gonna lower the high score to say 20, and let's test it. You can see that by reaching nine yards, I don't unlock anything. I can see that I make a high enough high score. I can go back to the shop and I've locked a new page. And here it is, here are our new items. And if I close the game, and open again, you can see that I still go to the next page of the shop. Perfect. All right, so that's it for this video. I hope you learned something new. If you have any doubts about the code or any suggestions about the next topic, do tell me in the comments. If you like this content and you want more, please like and subscribe. And in the next episode, we'll take a look on how to implement the Whirlpools, a type of enemy that drags the player in with random force and kills them if they get too close. All right, so I'll see you in the next video.